Hello and welcome. My name is Lisa Barry Wensveen. I am an Assistant Director of Administration and Conferences and also the Housing Transition Coordinator for Purdue University Residences. I am here today uh, to let you know about uh, auxiliary housing. If you are watching this video, you are most likely wondering what is auxiliary housing? Uh, I am here today with Caitlin, who is wondering the same thing. Yes, actually, I'm not really sure what auxiliary housing means, and I don't know how it will affect me in my first year at Purdue. Sure, I understand. Um, we have three different styles of auxiliary housing here um, with Purdue University residences, and each one is a little unique and a little different uh, for different reasons. Probably the best way for me to answer your questions and get you familiar with what those look like would be to take you on a tour and show you. Would that work for you? That would actually be great. Okay, well, let's go. Okay, cool. Okay, so Caitlin, here we are now in our residence hall type um, auxiliary housing and there are a couple different styles of housing in this hall so we'll look at this one first and this is what we consider our bunk style housing um, as you can see there are multiple um, bed spaces and, and areas for multiple students in the room each area has a bed a desk uh, and wardrobe space and uh, the wardrobe space does have an area um, that is uh, lockable with a lock if a student wants to put their valuables in there and be able to lock that up as well Oh, cool. Okay, so it seems like there's about 10 beds in this space. Yep. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah, we have about about 10 students um, uh, per per room where the they're set up in this way. I don't see a bathroom in here. How does that work? So each of these bunk style um, rooms that are set up are in halls that are community bath uh, style halls. So this would be the same. It would be just like if you were on a floor and sharing a bath with the people on the floor, there would be a bathroom um, you know, out in the hall for these folks um, that they would share that community bath as well. Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And it seems like in this type of space, it's a lot easier for you to make friends or talk to your bunk mates. Does that happen a lot? It does, actually. We, we, it's funny you should say that. We hear that a lot from students uh, that are placed in this style of, of housing, that they find that they're really able to make friends and meet people more easily because they are all in the same room and, and sharing that space together. Awesome. And oftentimes they, they, take, they make good friends and stay with them after, after they've even moved to their permanent location. Nice. Well, that mm -hmm. sounds really fun. And you said there's another other residence hall type that we might be interested in? There is. Um, there's another type of um, auxiliary housing within the residence halls um, that are actually up on the floors. Uh, so we can go up there and take a look at how that might differ from this type of space. Okay, okay sounds let's good. Go. Yeah. Hey, so Caitlin, now we're up on um, one of the floors in what we call one of our other uh, residential auxiliary housing options. Um, this room in particular is uh, double occupancy, so a little bit different from what we just saw in the bunk style room. Okay, this actually looks like a regular residence hall room. It actually does. It's very similar. There's some, some few minor differences which you'll notice. Um, for instance, there is a sink in the room and uh, the wardrobe, the closets are not built in. We have wardrobes more similar to what we saw downstairs. Uh, they do have the locking uh, compartment in them as well. Um, but yes, very, very similar to uh, what would be just like one of the other rooms uh, on, on the floor. Okay, and this has a community bathroom as well? It does, yes. Uh, so you would use the same bath that the rest of the uh, residents uh, in the permanent spaces on this floor use um, as a community bath. That's cool. And how long would I be in here? So um, for any of the residence hall um, auxiliary housing options, you're usually in them for a month or two um, almost all of those students are going to be moved uh, by the end of October at the latest. For moving purposes, I wouldn't want to have to move mid-semester, so would I have some help with that or would I have to do it all by myself? Yes, absolutely. We will provide help if you would like that assistance. Um, mostly what you would be responsible for is just gathering all of your personal items, making sure they're packed okay. up, and um, you would have moving assistants um, that you would schedule through me. So when you get your rooming assignment, I would send you the email letting you know what your new assignment is and details about how you can go about scheduling that move. Um, really, the move goes very quickly. Um, if you're prepared and ready, uh, most of those moves are finished and you're in your new room in an hour and ready to start unpacking and getting settled. Thank you for this information. I feel a lot better about moving in now. Great, I'm glad to hear it. Um, we have found that all of our options for on-campus housing are really diverse and have different um, 
benefits to offer and the same is true with our auxiliary housing. Uh, our students have found that it is just as inviting and comfortable and uh, supportive as an environment as it would be in any of our other um, housing options. Uh, so we're really looking forward to welcoming you to University Residences. That's perfect.